Welcome back. A SpaceX crew is on a rescue mission to bring back stranded astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Sunita Williams. You remember this. They arrived at the International Space Station a while ago. That two-man crew includes an American astronaut and a Russian cosmonaut launched on Saturday in SpaceX's Dragon capsule. Wilmore and Williams, they're going to hitch a ride with the crew on the return leg, which is slated for February. They've been stranded at the space station since June when their Boeing Starliner capsule suffered thruster failures and helium leaks. They were only supposed to be there for eight days. This is the moment the Dragon capsule docked at the space station and the crew were welcomed by their fellow astronauts. Joining us now is Dr. Paul Sutter. He's an astrophysicist and NASA advisor, also the author of this super chill titled book, How to Die in Space, <laughs> A Journey Through Dangerous Astrophysical Phenomena. Dr. Sutter, thank you for joining us this morning. Okay, so how is it that NASA decided this was the best way to bring Williams and Wilmore back? And why did it take such a long time to ultimately settle on this course of action? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, ultimately, everything we do in space, we have to do with an incredible amount of care and analysis and study because a failure is not an option. We don't want any astronauts to come to harm. And so as soon as the issues cropped up with Starliner, uh, NASA and Boeing and SpaceX all started working together to find solutions. So one option was to, to take a risk with Starliner. Uh, maybe it was fine, but like, you you don't want to take that risk. We couldn't quantify the risk. We couldn't tell uh, how bad of a risk it was that Starliner would fail on its return back to Earth with two astronauts. So instead, NASA turned to the normal crew rotations that happen roughly every six months on the space station. And normally, this spacecraft, this Dragon capsule that just went up, was supposed to bring four astronauts to the International Space Station. But instead, they're just bringing two. That leaves two empty seats so that when it returns, uh, SUNY and Butch can come back with them. And this seemed like the safest, most appropriate way to get these astronauts back to Earth. It's just really so amazing that it went from eight days to eight months. <laughs> we know that the faulty <laughs> Boeing Starliner that brought them there in the first place, that, that returned successfully to Earth earlier this month, but it had all those issues. What's next for that capsule? Will Boeing and NASA look to rectify those issues? Is, is this capsule just done? <laughs> uh, surely this particular capsule is done. I do not think this particular capsule is going to return to space. As for what comes next with Boeing's Starliner program, uh, I'm just glad I am not in those meetings because I'm sure it is very tense and very fraught <laughs> because Boeing has announced that they want to continue the Starliner program. They want to keep working with NASA. They want to keep developing the spacecraft. Uh, but after a, uh, a faulty issue like this, the, the, the future remains uncertain. Yes, the Starliner did return back to Earth empty and safe, but Boeing has a lot to answer for, and they have been very tight-lipped. They have not given any press conferences. They have not released a lot of information. Uh, so we're going to see over the next few months where the relationship between NASA and Boeing goes. I've been so fascinated as we've had experts like yourself on the show, as we've had astronauts on the show, in in hearing that there, it's not just completely negative surrounding the fact that it's an eight-day mission goes to eight months. You know, I'm thinking, like, all the weddings that you're missing or things with their family. I know that they both have families. Uh, but they have seemed in good spirits. And I do understand, of course, if you're an astronaut, it's a privilege, right, to actually get to spend time in space, which is not how you're going to spend most of your time, despite how much you train for these types of things. What do you think? I mean, is this a challenge to be in the space this long unexpectedly? Is it taking a mental or physical toll, or is it something that's kind of an, an unusual opportunity? Uh, yeah, th th it's kind of a mixed bag here. On the one hand, these are professionals. They are professional astronauts. Their job is to be in space. Uh, their job is not to be on the ground. And so mm -hmm. the more time they have in space, the more time they have to do what they have been training their entire lives to do. So I'm sure that's why they're pretty calm about this because they get to be in space longer. They maybe set some records. They get to do more experiments. But more time in space does take a toll on the human body. Uh, without uh, that constant pull of the Earth's gravity, uh, your bones 
get thinner, your muscles get weaker, your heart gets weaker. Um, and so this is going to take a toll on them, but that's part of the part of the game. Wow. All right. Dr. Paul Sutter, fascinating conversation. Always great to have you. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.